Welcome back to the Young Turks. Now, uh, we do a lot of foreign uh, policy news on the show, but we don't talk to enough foreign leaders, so we wanted to correct that a little bit by uh, bringing on Dr. Chi Swan Juan. He's the leader of the Singapore Democratic Party. And uh, Dr. Chi, it's a pleasure to have you on the Young Turks. Thank you. It's good, good to be on. Uh, Dr. Chi, I, you know, I'm at a loss as to where to start because you have such a long career and, um, and, and you're in the middle of uh, so many controversies uh, in Singapore. You've been arrested on, and on a number of occasions uh, and they've gone after you for defamation and won some of those lawsuits. Um, so I got, as an outside observer, I've got to start there, I think. And wh why have you been, uh, why has the government of Singapore arrested you so many times? Well, because this government is not a democratic one. It, it doesn't really believe in, in democracy, the principles of democracy. It doesn't subscribe to the freedoms that uh, you, you are so familiar with, freedoms of speech, association, and, and assembly. So every time somebody does something that wants to question and hold this government accountable, it comes down on you with, with uh, the, the kind of force that you see in any autocratic uh, um, society. So uh, are you saying that they arrested you basically to keep you quiet? Well, you know, that the few times that I've been um, arrested and then charged and convicted was for speaking in public. Um, and in Singapore, it's a, there's law against you um, speaking in public, and you cannot even demonstrate opposition to the actions of the government. And uh, any time five or more persons want to come together, uh, to, to conduct any kind of political activity, you need a permit. And that's not, permits are not given here. Uh, and so basically you just have an, uh, uh, the, any kind of uh, democratic activities, political activities that, that are banned. To the extent that even the law now states that even one person, even one person just uh, coming to want to show any kind of dissent or protest, that, that's, um, that's illegal. So, Dr. Chi, a lot of people who are not familiar with Singapore uh, would be wondering, uh, do you have freedom of speech in Singapore? Is it a real democracy? Uh, are there functioning uh, political parties uh, that, where you have real election? There is only one political party, and that's the ruling party. The rest of the opposition parties uh, just basically don't have a role to play in, in, in political life here in Singapore. I mean, we are just so handicapped. Uh, we've been just, just decimated, uh, and that it's just there for window dressing, just to, there to let the world know that, look, we still have political parties, but really we're not, not f functioning in, in, in any sense of the word that you would uh, imagine in, in the U.S. So, no, there isn't a, a functioning democracy here. We, we have laws here, for example, the Internal Security Act, that allows the government to um, detain citizens here without trial, and we've had opposition members of parliament, elected members of parliament in the 1960s and 70s who were arrested and detained for 20 years. The longest serving political prisoner was, was detained without trial for 32 years. Can you imagine that? Even Nelson Mandela was in prison for only 27 years, just to give you perspective on that. So you, you have a real situation here whereby there's, there's absolutely no dissent. Uh, no opposition is, is allowed uh, in this society. How long has the ruling party been in charge in Singapore? Oh, since 1959. So you're talking about full half century. And Uninterrupted one party state. So that, that gives you an idea of the kind of, of system, political system that we have here. So what is the role of the Singapore Democratic Party then if uh, you guys can never win an election? Well, basically, we're just trying to keep democracy, the flame of democracy, alive, that's all. I mean, at this stage, we're really not talking about in, 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 in any position to win any election. Uh, basically, you just try, we're just trying to, to continue to, to speak up and, and to uh, continue to keep this little flame here kindled so that, you know, we won't be totally snuffed out. And that's, that's a, a tremendously difficult uh, um, job because the government continues to use all kinds of unjust laws, very repressive laws, um, to take us to court to make sure that we don't function and continue to prosecute us. I mean, on a personal basis, I've been to prison uh, on seven different occasions already, and I've been sued for defamation in order to pay more than a million dollars. 
And because of my inability to pay the, these amounts, I've been uh, made a bankrupt by the court. And as a result of my bankruptcy, I've been barred from standing for elections, and I've been banned from traveling overseas. So this is the kind of, of tactic uh, that the, this government in Singapore here uses, and it's, it's tremendously difficult Dr. Chi, for the I read, opposition function. I read about those defamation cases against you. Um, why did they win? Uh, is, is the jury system, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the judicial system also rigged in Singapore? Well, the chief justice in Singapore has said openly and publicly that he's so enamored by the paramount leader here in Singapore, and that's Lee Kuan Yew himself. And, you know, the, the judiciary in another cases where we've been prosecuted has also said that we cannot question and the, the, the reputation of, of this country. Uh, even though we've got constitutional rights, the judiciary is saying right now that these constitutional rights are not as important as keeping the reputation of this country. And if you look at what, what it really means, this reputation of this country is really the reputation of the ruling party. So you can understand the situation that we have here, and it's, it's impossible to win any case We're uh, when to we go to court. We're going to uh, talk to Dr. Chi Sun Juan. He's the leader of the Singapore Democratic Party. Uh, Dr. Chi, are the elections, you think, fraudulent in Singapore? Or do you think uh, that since they don't allow you to speak, and if you do, they either arrest you for speaking in public or they sue you for defamation, et cetera, that they oppress your right to speak uh, enough that people just simply don't vote for you? You see, th th we have... The elections in Singapore here, all everything is controlled by the Prime Minister's office. There is no independent elections commission. And laws and, uh, and rules regulating elections are changed at a whim. Uh, for example, we've had these redrawing of these constituencies. They're not, they're not the kinds that you see in, in America whereby, you know, bits and, bits and little pieces here just, just to adjust for population change and so on. You're talking about wholesale changes of constituencies, and they are announced only shortly, shortly before elections. In one of the elections in the past, the, the boundaries were only announced a day before elections are called. And we have all but nine days to campaign. And then the entire media is in the hands of the government. Every TV station, every radio station, every newspaper is run and controlled by the government. So you can imagine that kind of a scenario under which you go into elections so much so that we cannot even find candidates for the opposition. We cannot even find half the seats, half the candidates to, to contest in the, half the seats. So that come election day, even before the first vote is cast, that the ruling party has already won. And so that's the kind of scenario that we're, we're dealing with here. And it's no wonder with all these threats and, and, and intimidation of the, uh, by the ruling party on the electorate that the people are really terrified and don't really dare to vote for the opposition. So it's a, a combination of a whole host of factors that really doesn't make elections here uh, free and fair in any sense whatsoever. Is it possible that because Singapore is prospering economically that they're simply getting votes based on the economy? Well, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to the, 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 the rich uh, and the powerful here, of course that they will say that, that, that you know everything is working fine and therefore this uh, um, society is democratic, but then when you talk to the um, the underclass, which we have, of which we have a, a significant uh, um, segment, uh, they don't have a voice. I mean, wages are suppressed, and, and they haven't got a, a say in, in how they want and their working conditions, and so on and so forth. And come elections, all they have is just uh, um, you know intimidation, and then there's very little that they can do. So we are faced with a very big problem here. Dr. Chi, finally, uh, what would be your suggestion for a resolution? I know that's not an easy question or something that you can state uh, very quickly, but uh, to the best of your abilities, what would you like to see happen in Singapore? Really, I think uh, uh, in reality, change must come from the people in Singapore. Uh, and there's nothing else anyone can, uh, there's nothing anyone can do to, to bring about change. But what I, I, I would like to, to be able to, to emphasize on is that as we are more inter uh, interdependent in terms of this globalization and so on and so forth, some of these people that come in and invest in Singapore, and, and I'm specifically talking about some of the American companies, multinationals, they need also to be aware 
of the, the, the need for, for democracy, for an openness, for this government to be held transparent and accountable. And I think that's the best case scenario for us to go forward. And if there's anything that we can do to change things, it would be uh, to encourage more openness and, and uh, to encourage the, uh, for us to hold dear these principles of freedom of speech and assembly. That's got to be important as we, we go forward. All right, Dr. Chi Soon Juan, uh, leader of the Singapore Democratic Party, thank you for joining us on the Young Turks. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. All right, we'll be right back with David Swanson, Young Turks.